please, 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 I cannot um, invite you more strongly. Um, either talk to um, your uh, Gilson rep um, who specializes in direct mail or talk to the post office. The intelligent barcode really is doing an enormous amount of, of upgrading. Um, the idea that, that if you have the intelligent barcode, you can track this on its way there. You can also track it on the way back. Um, you can do all kinds of amazing things with it. Um, I'm going to say this to you all now. Uh, please do not underplay QR codes. The downside, first of all, they're celebrating their 20th year. They've been around for, since 1994. Reality is they don't come to North America until 2009. We don't start to incorporate them until 2010, and we do a really crappy job of it. Because all we think that we need to do is pump these out and put them, and people are like, oh my god. It's like, please understand, I've had extremely successful QR code campaigns for one reason, is that I understood early these are design driven. They have to be well designed. You have to remember all this is is a shortcut URL to a microsite. The microsite has to be extraordinarily well designed. Everything has to be thumbable. 85% of QR codes are done using a smartphone. 35% contrast ratio. I can do color on color, drop shadows, etc. Key point, you absolutely must put your logo, a brand, a shield, some sort of design to uh, personalize this to your company. If you don't know how, go to YouTube and type in QR code plus logo. And there are seven videos that will show you how to do it in Photoshop, show you how to do it in Illustrator um, very, very easily. My point of it is you can do something like this, but why wouldn't you do something like that? Or these. I mean, photo at the top, illustration at the bottom, uh, right hand side looks like it was made out of the coffee that created the stain. Lower right hand corner, not a straight line in the entire piece. Uh, three color. Gillette uses shave cream. By the way, uh, uh, Mars uses M&Ms. Uh, Legos uses Legos. Uh, New York Times, balloons. I mean, this is fun stuff. You don't want to do it all the time. This isn't what you want to really turn as your, your primary hook for your brand. But as you're doing and looking for techniques to engage people and get them into a, a new aspect to a campaign, this works extraordinarily well. The most popular QR code in the United States, this gets 18 to 22 million hits per month. Per month. I mean, why does it work? And you'll notice, really nice color, beautiful drop shadow. The blood drop actually is their brand, okay? Why did it work? And by the way, when we talked to the, 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 the company that uses this, they said, oh, yeah, we had this in magazines. We had this as blow-ins. We had it as ads. Once we started tracking the, the acceptance rate, we got to a certain point. We just didn't have to use print anymore. We wanted to save the money. Um, but, but it worked. It was the best way of introducing. Um, so here's the interesting thing. Why does it work? Because they got you to go and there was a dashboard. And the dashboard gave you all of these summable options. So the first thing was all the different social media, which continues to grow and grow. They used YouTube very, very separately um, to show you trailers for upcoming episodes, past episodes, superb interviews with the stars, uh, the makeup artists, the directors, etc. They have a storefront that literally sells millions of dollars worth of merchandise, and then they take you to the parent company, which happens to be HBO, so that you can do all their other properties. So yes, this is True Blood. Um, this is very seasonal. Um, they're doing an extraordinary business now because True Blood is on, but five months ago it was all about Game of Thrones. And several months prior to that, it was all about Boardwalk Empire or whatever. But every major company in this game uses QR codes very, very successfully. Um, certainly, um, we've seen good success uh, with uh, personalized URLs with pearls. They still work extraordinarily well, uh, particularly if you have got, 
a quantified audience. Um, and then the last, of course, is augmented reality. Um, I've done a lot of work in augmented reality. I don't know how fam familiar you are. In fact, let me put it this way to you. You all know what augmented reality is because you all watched the Olympics, you know, when you saw the flags in the lanes, or if you watch a football game and you see the lines across. By definition, augmented reality says you have a reality or a real-time component over which you are going to overlap either computer animation, computer illustration, or computer-generated information. So, perfect example. I had to do a, a, web, a webinar international. Um, I was using our standard five, and this is about Super Dude. So, you can see me. I'm in my studio in the background. All I've done is I've held this piece of paper in front of my webcam. Ooh. It triggered my server in Boston to play this video. Ooh. Now, I knew it so well that I, I was able to interact with something that didn't exist at all. But, of course, I was watching myself Ooh. on the monitor. And you'll notice as I'm moving the book, it changes the perspective and the point of view. This was actually created um, as a flat illustration. So I wanted to show the fact that we actually worked from a flat illustration um, to be able to create this. This was done probably uh, eight years ago in some of the very early days. This took six weeks and cost $20,000. I will share with you that doing this now, that I could probably get this done in two weeks or so. Uh, and typically the process is um, storyboarding, and then computer animation, 3D rendering, and then programming, and then setting it up with this, the proper server. One of the most beautiful um, augmented reality campaigns I've seen um, was a six-page insert in British magazines for Dunhill was the client. Um, <clears throat> and they had these gentlemen talk. This is Sir Ralph Fiennes. On the expeditions, Fiennes. you don't get self-doubt. You either can keep going or you'll be dead if you do. Talking so about uh, climbing Everest. This is one of the principal dancers from the Royal Ballet. 14, 15 in a, in a comprehensive school where there was no other ballet dancers. That was and one of the top studio pro uh, theatre producers in London. I was brought up in a place called Newlyn, near Penzance in Cornwall. And every single morning, I used to walk from my home. So stop and think about the implications. These images have got um, essentially what we call a watermark to be the trigger to launch. But I can take any photo and turn it into an augmented reality trigger so I could send you an annual report where the photo of the CEO launches into that year's speech, or the CFO gives you the numbers, or I could send you a direct mail piece that's got a trigger that takes you to a commercial that you already know that's on television or another campaign. But the idea that I can, and why is this so important? When I talk about this and QR codes, this is a print device that facilitates a continued online marketing conversation. Our customers love multimedia. Our customers want to be entertained. And the fact of the matter is we can give that to them now uh, in a way that absolutely builds that sort of brand loyalty, that brand penetration. Um, this was actually one that we did in, in print and. Each one of these is actually a trigger um, and if you hover your tablet or your phone, each one actually uh, has been animated. There were 10 different ones so that they all did different things. They also came with sound. So, um, you know, you could hear the, the crackle of the flame or um, you'll see in a second you could hear the Star Spangled Banner. The idea being that these are triggers. We were just using this as, the, as an example. Um, I'm at the largest casino management group in the United States. They see that and they freak out. And they went, oh my God, can we get that? I was like, oh, no problem. They said, we've got this huge um, uh, poker 
and uh, blackjack competition coming up. We're going to send out an invitation. We hadn't finalized our, our, our art. I just sent them a na the, the native file on this. Um, they printed it. They sent it out. They had the highest response rate for the competition that they'd ever had, highest RSVP. Um, the fact of it was, the interesting thing, I, the, the customers in, in Vegas, they're sending it out. It was printed in Vegas, but that whole card turning over and showing 21 resided in my server in Boston. You know, and it worked throughout North America. It works just that way. Um, I don't know if you've seen this, and I think this is one of the best um, stories. Um, Lego already had a lot of boxes printed. They couldn't go back and reprint. They created a watermark on top of the box, and they created what are known as Lego centers. And a Lego center is if you go into a, a Lego store, it's a big monitor. It's got a webcam running the software. The child brings the box up. The webcam reads the, the AR watermark, figures out which video to show in real time, and then literally builds what's inside the box in 3D with all the moving parts in real time. You'll notice there's nothing on top of her box but you totally see what's inside on this. This has been so successful. Um, Lego, that, ha that is an extraordinarily successful company to begin with, has reported a 20% increase in in-store sales everywhere they did that. So not only do they have it now in all the Lego stores, they're going to be rolling it out now in uh, Toys R Us, Kids R Us, and Best Buy. Um, this is actually gives you a great idea of where we're going with catalog. Um, so magazine ad in Bazaar Magazine um, for Tag Hauer watches. It sends the young lady to the Tag Hauer website. It turns on her webcam and tells her to print out this piece on her desktop printer, cut out the watch, notch it so it fits her wrist. There's an AR code on top of the watch. She holds it up to the webcam, which now turns on the Tag Hauer catalog and she can now see the products on her wrist in 3D in real time. If she likes something, she can actually either send it to herself as an email, or she can go directly to the, to the storefront and purchase it from the storefront, and they've had extraordinary success. So who picks up on this? All of the shoe companies. Now it's the eyewear companies that are doing it. You can go online and you're looking at yourself and you've got all of the different glasses and sunglasses, you pick what you want and it puts it on you and then you can just move and see what it looks like. Um, this is the uh, IKEA catalog. So they took their entire catalog by department, scanned it. Um, we're gonna go into the sofa department. We could have gone into beds or cabinets, but now it shows you all of the different sofas that are available. Um, all the different shapes. Um, so you're looking at all these different shapes. And you're looking for the one that you like. You find a shape that you like. It calls up that specific SKU. You're now seeing that specific sofa through your phone into your house or into your apartment, into your space. So you pinch or um, spread to make it fit. If you've already got a sofa there, it will actually supersede it, overlap it. Once you have it in place, it goes to that specific SKU information and now shows you all of the colors that are available for that specific sofa. And in some cases, you'll see it in polka dots and in plaid, but if it comes in leather, you can also see it in leather. The last one I want to show you, I'm hoping it's going to work just because of the lights, but this is really extraordinary. Um, Wired Magazine, working with Lexus, um, they have an app, you turn the app on, it shows you to turn the app on and place your iPad underneath the, the page. Um, Lexus has bought both sides, top and bottom, so there's nothing on the back side to show through. Now keep in mind, the ad is static. Everything you're about to see is showing through the paper based on the software programming um, and the, so and the uh, computer animation.
I love showing this to young designers because I tell them this is the future of graphic design. Print design plus animation programming working together for that really ultimate customer advertising experience. So anyway, I want to show you that. There's a bunch of other stuff in the book. You can, you can read it on your own. We really tried to do a lot with different formats um, and tried to show you some really interesting things that can be done. Engagement becomes all important. I love this piece. Um, keep in mind, everything that's white has got soft touch on it, and everything that's photographed has got really high gloss UV. Um, I happen to know the, the art director on this piece in Detroit, and interestingly enough, he said, we ended up doing this because we didn't have any budget to do anything else, but it ended up being a real winner. So watch the way this works. Um, it's a superb piece. So they just fold it in the four corners, which creates a square which is not mailable. But if you fold the square in half, it becomes a rectangle, and it is mailable, which made all the sense in the world. And actually, all they needed then was a tab holding that closed. Um, as it turned out, the, they didn't want to, to ruin the soft touch, so they put it in an envelope. But they also used this for a lot of different um, shows and all. Um, this is a, a standard iron cross, but it's really quite interesting. Uh, most of you know what an iron cross looks like. But what they ended up doing is that you'll notice, and by the way, this is for Emma. And if you're not familiar with Emma, it's one of the top email companies in the United States using direct mail to get customers. And one of the things that we found out in our research is the more you get people involved in the piece, the more engaged they are, the higher the response rates. So in this case, they put some slits here so that you could lift each one of them up and it was question, answer, question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. Very, very successful piece. Um, done all on one sheet of paper to be able to create this wonderful closure and then put in an envelope. Really nice piece. I love this. This is a, also known as a snake fold. Um, but this was a sectional that they wanted you to see how much that they could actually do. If you look at this, you could see how they printed this on the page, one nestled into the other, into the other, into the other, and then cut out um, to be able to create that shape. Um, so it actually works. This is a very interesting piece. It's actually a box. It can actually be mailed. Uh, it's about $1.65. Um, it's shrunk wrapped. And then when you pull the top off, um, you'll notice that it's got this strange fold. You can just see the Z of the postcard that's tucked inside, but then you take the corners and you pull it and the entire thing opens up into a flat sheet. But it was mailed out as a box. Absolutely gets a lot of attention uh, and works very well. These are the kinds of pieces, by the way, that Trish will, will highlight every week to show you how they work and how they're made and what it costs. So nice piece. So anyway, um, tons of formulas in the back of the book. Yeah. What else can you say? Phew. I cannot thank you enough for your time. I cannot thank you enough for your attention. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to stick around, answer any questions that you might have. You've got the books. Um, so um, until I see you again, um, different topic, I hope all your printing meets your expectations. Thanks so much, everybody.